Ohio. We're high on Ohio. These stories inform and inspire through the words of people who make Ohio home. Good news and good ideas, identifying and acknowledging the excellence that is all around us. So Matt, we have a segment on this that's called What's Keeping You Up at Night? Mm -hmm. So now besides the wonderful family dog, which I saw coming through here, um, what keeps you up at night? No, you know, what keeps me up at night is is what America are we leaving to our kids? And and I don't mean that in a kind of theoretical sense. You know, I mean when when you look at the number of kids in high school today or in college today that can't do basic math, can't do basic English, right? That where we have jobs where there are needs for folks who can actually do math and they can write and they can work through problem solving. And yet we are having now generations go through school systems that are failing them, colleges where they don't learn anything compared, you know, from day one to the fourth year or fifth year or sixth year that they graduate. Mm -hmm. We are are creating a a greater and greater stratification that says, oh, you know, this, the system we have today is good enough. Mm -hmm. and, and, And yet it's not. My kids are going to do great because they've got two parents that are highly educated that make them do their homework, but most kids aren't as lucky as as my kids. And so as we have an America that has this huge demand for high-tech, high-talent, high-thinking jobs, but we are failing our kids in our K-12 and higher ed system, that is what keeps me up at night when I say, how do we create an America where it is the land of opportunity that it was for me, yeah. for you, for our grandparents? Yeah. Well, let me ask you this question. Then it's a little bit of data, mm-hmm. okay? Is um, I saw this recently in the Wall Street Journal. If you wait until you're 21 to marry, mm-hmm. if you wait until after you have children, I mean, if you wait to have children after you get married, and you finish your high school degree, the odds are 95% you will not live in poverty. Right. So from a poverty standpoint then and human services and all that, how do we move these people, you know, the, 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 the multi-generational welfare, right. you know, out of poverty into that next bump up on the, on, the, on the food chain here in Ohio? Well, here's what we know doesn't work. What doesn't work are spending billions and billions of, on government programs, because okay. we've done that now for 40 years and it's not worked. Poverty's right. gotten worse. Illegitimacy rates have gotten worse. Marriage among non-educated folks has gotten harder, and the divorce rates have gotten higher. Yeah. This is Kay Heimowitz, her book, Marriage and Cast in America. So, so here's the problem, right? We spend an enormous amount of our time and energy on what happens from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Monday through Friday in the lives of kids in America. Mm-hmm. And what we then do is we essentially turn our turn away from what happens from 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. the next morning. So these kids are not getting the right amount of nutri- nutrients in their body, mm-hmm. right? They're not getting the right proteins, carbohydrates, mm-hmm. vitamins and minerals. So mm-hmm. their brains are, are struggling to, to be able to pay attention, to do the work, mm-hmm. right? They don't get enough sleep, too much screen time. Mm-hmm. We have kids that are going to kindergarten, and it's the first time they're seeing a book mm-hmm. against the, my three-year-old, who's probably now, by the time my three-year-old hits kindergarten, he'll probably have read... Mm-hmm. Over 5,000 books read to him. Mm-hmm. Th- there's no way the kid from Columbus or you know even East, rural Ohio East Cleveland, is ever going to be able County. to compete with that. Right. But but all we focus on is what we can do in 40 hours. You know, essentially, you know, from eight to four Monday through Friday, and we forget what happens in that child's life after that. And so we've got to spend more time trying to re-engage community groups in a way where it's not the federal government that is their golden ticket. It's that community kid that, that needs help that is the ticket. So, and right now, with all the federal grants and the federalization of so much, mm-hmm. everyone looks to Washington as the people they need to satisfy, not the kids in the community. So walk me through then, on a practical level, how would this work? You're just you're talking about food and nutrition, for example. Sure. I think what we've got to do is we've got to, we've got to get the power and money out of Washington, D.C. If the federalization of our lives has not made things better. And it, that's not a, oh, it's because of the Democrats or progressives or liberals. They share their blame, right? Government grew under Republicans as well, as, as you know, and conservatives have made lots of messes too. What this is about is where do we want the locus of power in, over our lives and our pocketbooks? And most Americans say, I want it locally and I want it at the state level, but I don't want it in Washington. So if we get the money and power out of Washington, then I believe locally and at the state level, we can solve our problems because we'll have the money to do so and we'll have all the power and accountability here, 
not with some bureaucrat in Washington who's never accountable to somebody who's in East Cleveland or downtown Columbus or over in Dayton who just lost their job. So that's how we get, we'll solve the problems here, but how do you solve a problem here when all the money is in Washington?